Donald Trump has a long track record of skipping out on the bill, whether he's allegedly stiffing contractors or allegedly not paying city officials where Trump holds his rallies. To quote the Wall Street Journal, Trump has, quote, left a trail of unpaid bills in his wake. But there are some bills you just can't weasel out of, at least not without posting a bond, a massive bond, first. And that is a lesson Donald Trump is learning the hard way when it comes to that $464 million judgment in the civil fraud case brought by New York Attorney General Tish James. With the deadline looming for Trump to post a bond in that case, today, Trump's lawyer said it's not going to happen. They claim Trump and his fellow defendants are facing, quote, insurmountable difficulties obtaining a bond for the full $464 million, calling it a, quote, practical impossibility to get a bond for that amount, saying Trump went to four brokers and almost 30 surety companies and everybody turned him down. It's a scenario New York Attorney General Tish James saw coming, and she has been absolutely clear on what she's prepared to do if and when Trump comes up empty. If he does not have funds uh, to pay off the judgment, uh, then we will seek uh, you know, judgment enforcement mechanisms in court, and we will ask the judge to seize his assets. We are prepared to make sure that the judgment is paid to New Yorkers. And yes, I look at 40 Wall Street each and every day. I look at 40 Wall Street every day. Boom. And that is where we start today with New York Times investigative reporter and MSNBC contributor Suzanne Craig, plus former top official at the Department of Justice and MSNBC legal analyst Andrew Weissman, and former senator and co-host of MSNBC's How to Win 2024 podcast, Claire McCaskill. A Andrew, let's start with you, because I'd like you to walk us through why Donald Trump needed to post this bond in the first place. Was it this, this way because he had pressure on him from Tish James collecting the full amount? What, what was going on here? So this is a standard um, practice. So um, the way it works is if you have a judgment entered against you in a court of law, uh, you're entitled to appeal it. But within 30 days, that judgment goes into effect so that the plaintiff can be made whole. If you want to avoid that going into effect, what you can do is you can post with the court either the full amount of money or some kind of bond that a company can give you. And it's a way of saying that money is there if you lose your appeal so that it's the plaintiffs are not bearing the risk that the money will not be there. So it's just a normal mechanism to make sure that the plaintiffs are the, not the ones that hold the risk here because they won. Um, and so the defendant has to put the money up uh, and uh, and then they go about their appeal. If they don't put the money up, then you get to enforce the judgment right now. And if it turns out you win your appeal, then the money gets returned to you. But during that interim period, if you haven't put the money up, the plaintiff gets to try and enforce the judgment against any and all unencumbered assets, which means any assets that are owned free and clear. It can be real estate, it can be stocks, it can be cash, it can be debts that you're owed, it can be income that's coming into you. All of that is on the table. And there are lots and lots of mechanisms to enforce that, including depositions, court proceedings, um, the court can actually freeze assets. And so this is a way of making sure that the plaintiff is not the one who's left holding the bag. And here the plaintiffs are New Yorkers who are owed this $464 million. So, so Andrew, just to follow up on a number of the points that you made, I, I want to play a little bit of what Tish James had to say about all of this. Let's take a listen. Financial frauds are not victimless crimes. He engaged in this massive amount of fraud, and it wasn't just a simple mistake, a slight oversight. The variations were wildly exaggerated, and the extent of the fraud was staggering. So the fact that she wanted to make clear that this was not a victimless crime, because that's a narrative that the Trump team had been kind of putting out there and sort of baked, trying to get baked into the conversation. 
But regardless of that, uh, Tish James sounds very serious here. How close are you, are we, do you think, to actually seeing her and, and, and law enforcement putting padlocks on the doors of Trump Tower? So first on the issue of victimless, just remember this sum of money is the amount of money that the judge determined Donald Trump uh, um, sort of illicitly obtained through fraud. In other words, this is the profit that he has to disgorge that he got as if you had stole, you know, stolen money from a bank and had the $464 million, you got to give it back. Um, and how are you, how is it that they're going to do it? And that like, and are they going to do it quickly? Absolutely. So just put yourself in the shoes of a public official, somebody who is there to protect the public interest on the very day that this judgment goes into effect, they're going to feel that burden of making sure that they are not sort of sleeping on the rights of the New York um, state taxpayers. So you're going to see this, um, you know, I hate to use the term imminently, but I, I would suspect on day one, you are going to see enforcement actions. And I, just to back up to sort of your sphere, my big picture reaction to this is somewhere Donald Trump must be lying because he has been saying that he is worth billions of dollars and he has now told the court that he can't get a bond. So he is either misrepresenting something to the court or he has been misrepresenting something to the public. But, you know, in the enforcement proceedings, he is going to be asked, and a lot of people are going to be asked who work for him about where all the money is. And we're going to soon find out a lot more if he doesn't get a bond about where his assets are, including how he was able to obtain a sort of $95 million bond in the E. Jean Carroll case. So, you know, his trying to be um, not transparent about where his assets are and how they're pledged, that could all come tumbling down in a matter of days. And so, uh, Andrew picks on, uh, uh, on a lot of interesting points there, particularly with respect to is he lying to the court or is he lying to the public? Um, Trump was asked about the massive amount of monies that he's, you know, on the hook for uh, during a, a town hall last, uh, last month in, in, uh, on Fox. Let's take a listen. Now, in this New York civil fraud case, this Judge Arthur Engeron ruled against you for actually almost a half a billion dollars plus interest that r runs every day. When I first read this, like $87,000 a day. How will you put up that kind of money because you have a bond to put up? Even if, if you appeal, you've got to put up escrow money. That's uh, uh, it's a lot it of dough. It is a, lot a of dough. form of... Navalny, it is a form of uh, communism or fascism. Which has nothing to do with the bond, because as we can see, this hits him both in the wallet and the ego. His real estate portfolios, uh, you know, they're his pride and joy. He's always bragged about them. How much of this is getting under his skin? Um, and what does it look like for him in having maybe to liquidate some of that to some of the points that Andrew was raising? Right. I mean, you can hear the clock ticking very loudly. He's now got a matter of days to come up with this. I have to say from today's filing, because a lot of people are, you know, they hear he's a billionaire. He says he's a billionaire. He does have assets that are worth a lot. So why can't he come up with the money? We know that in the E. Jean Carroll case, he did post the bond, almost $100 million. And in that, we can see in court documents that behind it, he was able to put up assets that he had in a, an account at Charles Schwab. So it looks like those were very liquid assets. And what came really just into focus for me today when I was reading the filing was that these companies that he's going to, he's been to several, um, they want cash. And they're very clear they do not want real estate. These are not companies in the business of dealing with real estate. And I think where Donald Trump is having problems here is coming up with what looks like from the filings a more than $500 million bond. He's got to put up more than the actual amount. And then there's fees involved. So that's where this is coming down to is he does not have that much cash on hand. And we're going to see now in the next week if he can, you know, this is a request, so he wants another hearing on this, or if, if 
you know, never count Donald Trump out if he can actually bind it in the next week, if he can do it. But right now he's saying to the court, we just can't. And not only just we can't because we don't have the cash, but the companies that we're talking to don't even, no one's ever posted something of this size to a private company. So there was a lot of layers in this, but it really comes down to just how much cash he has on hand. And he doesn't have the cash is what he's saying. The, the thing I find very interesting, Claire, and, and I know you can appreciate this, is that the man who has beat his chest and bragged about how, how wealthy he is and how much, um, you know, cash he's got and what he can do with it is exposed here. He is he's one of these guys who's now run his mouth and his mouth is caught up with the things he said. Um, but here in this case, you do have some semblance of holding Donald Trump accountable. Is it fair to take that assessment or is that going a little bit too far in explaining um, what all of this means at this moment? Well, um, Donald Trump, hello. Welcome to the rule of law. <laughs> um, you have avoided it all of your life. You refuse to pay people. Then you litigate and then you settle. That's your business model. And if you need to, you declare bankruptcy and really screw people out of their money. So th this is a whole new thing for him. And he is caught between what he said and what the reality is. And, you know, here's the really interesting part of this. Andrew made the point. We need to underline it four times with an exclamation point. This is normal. This is standard operating procedure when you have a judgment against you. You have to put up bond if you're going to appeal. Now, why did that happen? You know why that happened? Because people like Donald Trump tried to avoid paying. People like Donald Trump tried to hide their money. They tried to run off with their money. They tried to park it overseas, try to keep the, the plaintiff from getting their money. In this instance, the plaintiff is the state of New York. So this is a, all this is happening because people like Donald Trump don't want to pay their debts. And now he is going to have to sit with this. And frankly, the idea that no one will take his real estate as collateral ought to tell you something about whether or not he overvalued his real estate or not. 